Hi, everybody. I think I'm live. Yes. Yes. Oh, hi. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Becky. Hi, Claudia. Hi, Bart. Hi, everybody. That's. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon. Uh, such a beautiful day, beautiful season, and a beautiful time to to do uh, a little chi talk. And we have the subject of the day is, uh, is about sleep and, and insomnia. And I'm just very glad to offer this to, to the community. Very happy to offer a little bit more insight, kind of like behind the scene of traditional Chinese medicine, of Qigong practice, uh, to understand deeper these, these different topics that we're gonna talk about. And uh, today I chose to do a, a, a talk about uh, sleep and and uh, problem with sleep and uh, and the Q&A would be open to all subjects if you want to jump in and, and talk about a subject you just uh, go down and click on participant and then raise your hand there's an option button raise your hand if when you click on participant and you can raise your hand and talk and we can unmute you and you can ask a question at the end of this uh, of this kind of like a little preview that I'm gonna do. Um, so I'm uh, very glad to be here. Hi, Beth. Hi, Claudia, everybody's here. Awesome, <laughs> good to see you, how oh, fun. Uh, also, this is gonna be live on, on, uh, on Facebook and this is gonna be also podcasted, tra translated into a, just an audio file into the uh, Awaken the Healer Within. Uh, which is my podcast. So if you're interested in listening to this podcast, we're going to kind of transform it into the podcast. So uh, sleep is very important, right? Uh, but with recent, recent studies, we see that it's not only uh, a luxury, having a good night's sleep is not, is not really a luxury. It's, it's, very, uh, it's very profound to your health through your immune system and actually to longevity. Uh, so recent study also shows that uh, lack of sleep, uh, there's a, it's, it's actually, uh, there's higher risk of, of cancer. Actually the uh, Health World, or World Organization announced that everybody that works in a night shifts has more, uh, it's, it's actually a carcinogenic habit. So we see, especially around uh, cancer, like prostate, breast cancer, and colon cancer, which is interesting. Um, uh, it's also affect your DNA. And when we talk about immune system, uh, when we talk about lack of sleep is any time below seven hours of sleep for humans. So anytime that, anytime that we have, there is a study that shows like people that sleep between five to six hours versus seven to eight hours, there's a big difference in the immune system and the immune markers. And it's not by 20 and 30%, it's by 50%. So 50% of your immune system goes down 50 to 70 when you have, uh, uh, when you have problem uh, sleeping. So we, in traditional Chinese medicine, we talk about two different types of energy. Yeah? The one that is hard to fall asleep and the other one is uh, uh, waking up in the middle of the sleep. And then there's also waking up too early. So these are different energy that a Chinese doctor can uh, see what organ is not working properly and need balancing. So that's very important. Uh, before I share about, about this perspective of Chinese medicine, I, I just wanted to uh, share with you also that I worked with a lot of people with insomnia. And this is what one of my area of a lot of success so fixing fixing this uh lack of sleep is is not very hard but it really from my experience working with a lot of people that suffer from insomnia it's about uh, uh changing your lifestyle a little bit change, changing your lifestyle so before we start let's do a Let's do a little sequence, just kind of like an energy a, a, a opening ceremony for this talk, if you will. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just relax the head down to the down to the floor, so chin to the chest, and then slowly move the head towards the shoulder. And then see if you can 
feel the weight of the head. If this is too intense for you, just reduce the volume, reduce the volume of this neck rotation. It's just a simple neck, neck rotation. Yeah, and just, just go very slowly and try to like get the breath to open up these lines of tension. So you inhale through the nose and you exhale from, from the mouth. Yeah, very slow. And then just feel these different lines of tension that are opening up as you do this practice. Yeah, this is very important. There's a lot of nerves here connecting the, yeah, the central nervous system comprised of the head and the spine. And this is the point that the brain connects to the spine. So it's a very powerful, powerful area. The vagus nerve goes there. And breathe, exhale from the mouth. And then let's slowly change direction. Relax the shoulders. Soften the spine. So as you sit on a chair or maybe you stand or sit, whatever you do, just see if you can relax and soften the spine a little further. Soften the shoulders, soften the rib cage. So what you finding is that this movement is not only opening the kind of this area of the neck, but it's also kind of uh, carrying through into the shoulders and, and rib cage. And then let's come to the chin to the chest. Take a deep breath into the base of the skull and lift the head up. Nice, and then roll the shoulders a little bit. And let's hold these two points. These points in um, Chinese medicine is the point for sleep. So it's called Ao Ming point and it's located, let's see where it's located. It's just behind the earlobe. And you put both middle finger yeah, there's, so there's indentation here in the base of the skull. These are gallbladder 20. Then you go a little bit out from there, a little bit out. So it's between the ear. And so it's a little bit out on the perimeter of gallbladder 20. And this is called Ao Ming. And let's touch this point and massage them, close the eyes, and open the jaw a little bit. Open the jaw when you massage it and take a deep breath. Nice and exhale and bring the hands down. So you can kind of feel the surge of energy in the cranial area. Feels good, right? <laughs> so, so why we have problem falling asleep or waking up in the middle of a sleep and we see more and more people nowadays because of all these, all, all what's going on in the world with, uh, with, with all the unrest, there's more, um, there's more problems falling asleep or waking up in the middle of the sleep. So in Chinese medicine, we say that sleep, it, the heart is the ruler of sleep. So really it comes down to emotional agitation. So anything that, anytime that we have, uh, we are emotionally agitated, uh, that's what wakes up in the middle of the sleep or hard time falling asleep is also connecting to emotional agitation. One connects to the liver energy, one to the heart energy, but I don't want to start to talk about kind of like more uh, TCM dragon. So I'll, I'll keep it more like simple and like what we can do to kind of uh, have a better, a better sleep. Um, you know, sleep is kind of like, um, it's, it's, it's mirroring waking up. So waking up is kind of like you can think about an airplane kind of taking off. And when you're falling asleep, yeah, when you go to bed, it's like the airplane is about to land. So we're talking about uh, uh, there needs to be kind of a ceremony. It's almost like a ceremony before going to bed about, uh, about kind of landing good into the place of sleep. And, and that time, the two hours before going to bed are very crucial to how you're gonna sleep. So uh, it's almost like, um, what do you do in these two hours before going, how do you prepare for landing? 
so to speak. It's almost like we have the same thing in the morning, like how do you wake up and have the day very positive and very productive? So there's the practices of waking up and then the practice of, of kind of closing everything down. So what we can do, one of the, one of the most important uh, practices to go when you, you want to sleep well is first of all, to have a routine. So to have the body, we, we, the body learns through routine. So if you go to sleep at the same time, that would be very, very important. Uh, and uh, we say about, in, it should be between like 10 p.m., up until 10, 10.30, 10 you want to be in bed. So at 11, you want to really, really sleep. And there's a lot of studies about, about that, that at 11 p.m., you should be actually sleeping. And that would be very, very good for your endocrine system, for your hormonal, and you can go into this uh, very uh, deep, uh, deep waves of sleeping that, that, of sleep that would be very, very good for your hormonal, for the recovery. So why, why sleep is very important? Why is it not luxury? And why there's all these uh, health problems because of sleep? And recently, it's connected also to Alzheimer and also other diseases. It's, it's, very, it's actually fascinating. If you think about it, at sleep, the body heals. Like when we are feeling sick, what do we do? We go to sleep. At sleep, we heal. So if we don't have enough sleep, we don't, we don't heal. Just it, it, It's just that. And uh, problem in sleep are connecting to what we call the yin qi deficiency in Chinese medicine, meaning that, you know, in, in Chinese medicine, we don't think about your energy just as one type of energy. There's two types of energy. One is yin and one is yang. And when you are deficient in yin energy, it's really hard to sleep because uh, the night is the yin time. And the day is the yang time. So uh, if we're not, uh, we, we don't have enough yin energy, we, what, what does that mean that we don't have enough yin energy? What you want to, what you want to cultivate is, is a state of relaxation. So if the day, if, you know, we're living in a time, let's put it that way, we're living in a time that we are very wired and tired. Yeah, we're looking at the news. There's a lot of things are humming around our environment. There's a lot of buzzing that the lights, we, we, we don't, we don't, we, the sunset, we have a artificial light. Yeah, so we have all these uh, artificial things that are buzzing and humming around us. So there's a lot of uh, why, uh, a lot of young energy, a lot of activation. And also and there's no, uh, there's no relief from these. So what we need to do as our own practice, and this is this this problem is is across the board across the country you know a lot of people have problems sleeping and it, it's connect with how we live our life the modern life and the news and what you feed yourself it's not that you have, don't have to listen to the news but what i'm saying if if you can uh really put attention to having this time before going to bed like two hours of really working on the landing, that would be very, very powerful. So what does that mean? That means few things. It's closing all the loops that you have open in the day. Like if you haven't responded to the email or there's a story open or something. So there's few things. One thing is closing, kind of like closing the day, kind of finishing all the stuff that you did. Don't leave anything that unresolved. And then during these two hours, in order to calm the, the heart, to calm the Shen, to calm the spirit, that's what wakes us up. That's what is very active. You really want to uh, not, in these two hours or three hours, not to have anything that is emotionally agitated. So watching the news three hours or two hours before going to bed would be no, a big no-no. Watching a, a horror film, <laughs> watching... Um, you know, seeing something that is adrenaline connected or something that is emotionally agitating would not be good. So really what you want to focus is kind of closing the, closing the day in a very beautiful, loving way. So having a good conversation with a friend, like an easy, lighthearted conversation with a friend would be really, really nice. And um, another thing is to, to, uh, to focus on gratitude. We said before, going to bed and also look at your day. So at the end of the day is kind of like the end of life in a way. In, in Chinese medicine, we see like a year 
is like a day, is like a life of a person, it's all the same, it's just different, different, uh, it's all opening and closing, yeah, the day open is like the birth of the day, and the death of the day is the end of the day, so it's almost like the life, so before a person close their life, they want to kind of make peace with everything, uh, with, with their life, see what they learn, you know, if we take the past, if, if, if you had something agitating throughout the day emotionally, you really want to write it down, so journaling is very good, and I'll write down what was challenging today, what what you didn't um, you didn't do, or what was challenging, and write what write it down, and also kind of like what did you learn from that? So if we take the past or what what uh, triggered us emotionally as a learning, we see the past not as uh, as something to be stressed about, as but as something that we can learn and grow from. So if you look at the at the day, or you look at uh, negative energy or negative emotion as a learning that would really not be nice so we say a, pr a good practice would be to like look at your day what was the most challenging and what did you learn from it when you say when you ask yourself what did I learn from it you kind of close that em emotionally you close that and turn it into a positive into co something constructive and then you focus on gratitude you focus what are you grateful for and, and in Qigong tradition, there's a lot of practices to do with opening the heart. So there's a lot of practice that we do now in the summer uh, that are on my online platform. We're doing it all the time. If some of you are on it, so you can, you can do them more and, uh, and kind of connect with the idea of gratitude, of loving kindness, of what are you appreciating? I always say to my client, five, Find five things that you're grateful for before going to bed and uh, tell yourself a bedtime story. <laughs> tell yourself a bedtime story. I remember one time that I was very emotionally agitated. I saw a very bad film. I didn't know it's going to be so agitating film, but it was very agitating. <laughs> I was sitting in the cinema like this, you know, when your nerve current is shot and you're like, oh my God, there's so much violence. I, I wonder how I'm going to sleep tonight. And then what I did is that I brought to mind, I told myself a good time uh, story. So I brought to mind a movie that was, by the way, this is a, an amazing movie. If you want to sleep good, it's a documentary about Mother Teresa. It's called Mother Teresa. And I brought to heart, and I remember after watching this movie, I slept like a baby, like one of the best night's sleep ever. So you want to bring to heart and to mind something, some good experience that you felt very heartful, very loving. Yeah, so you really want to calm the heart because the heart is the ruler of sleep. So that would be a, a very, very good practice to kind of close the day, yeah, with heartfulness, with good energy, with peace, and also not, not get rid of something that was stressful throughout the day, but kind of see it as, what did I learn from this? You know, that would be acknowledging something negative in a, in a, in, but flip it on, on, a, on a good side. Does that make sense? So that would be that would be kind of like my suggestion in terms of like more of a how to work with your energy before going to bed. And in Qigong, there's a lot of practices also that are very powerful before going to bed. One of them is sound healing. Like you when, when you make sound and specific sound, and you can find it also on my website, some of this um, uh, practices we do for, for the summer. Now, while we talk about the summer, about uh, sleep in the summer, because the summer is the heart energy. The heart energy is very active. So what we notice that people that uh, have a hard time falling asleep or sleeping actually have more t hard time in the summer than the winter. The summer is more, we are more active. The heart is more active. So it's more important that it's hotter and, the, and, and there's more energy going there. So um, sound healing would be actually a Qigong. If you go to a Chinese doctor, you, you know, it sound, he would give you a prescription, sound healing, sound healing and, and what sound, you know, so, so you, can, you can look at the movement that we do and the sound that we do. The sound is really calming the mind. When you do sound on the exhalation, it really, really calms the mind. So uh, 
So I hope that's, uh, and of course you keep your, uh, you keep your environment clean of, of, um, of uh, Wi-Fi, if you can, or anything that is vibrating. You make sure that everything around your room and behind the wall of your room is kind of shut off. You close everything. Fresh air is very important. Cooling energy, so cold, a little cooler in the, in, in, uh, at night is, is very nice to sleep in a little cooler. It actually, you sleep uh, more soundly. Uh, but in general, I think that uh, see also throughout the day that you're not that you're not uh, stressful or hasty or multitasking or running around. Yeah, when we are running around, that's taxing the heart. When we are uh, running from one thing to another and we multitasking, we're very busy and we're watching the news and get upset and through, throughout the day, it's a very stressful day. That would be hard to actually wire the body down. It's, it's harder to, to land. You know, if, you, if you're going that much high, it's going to be really hard to land. So do, doing things that are enjoyable throughout the day, booking things throughout the day that are opening the heart, like exercise is great or walking in nature would be great. So anything that is, uh, uh, you like to do and it's, and it's fun and, and opening, heart opening would be good to schedule throughout the day um, to kind of like support, to calm down throughout the day. You don't want to stress yourself out. So look, if you're looking at the news too much, if you, you know, this is a time when a lot of people are stressed out. So, so it's, it's, it's how do we, run our own energy, how do we help ourselves, right? To, uh, for, for a better night's sleep and understanding that, that actually sleep in Chinese medicine is a practice. It's, 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 a, it's the, most, <laughs> it's the most important practice. If you look at, at the data, like immune system, hormonal balance, diseases, all that stuff, this is so important. And remember, Melatonin in your body starts producing at 9 p.m. and it stops at, at 1 a.m. 1 a.m. there's no more melatonin naturally produced. And uh, so you really want to use that wave. That's what we say. You sleep early and you wake up early. It's very good for you. And when you wake up early, there's all these practices for waking up better and having the day better. Maybe we can do a webinar about that, uh, like a little chat about that. But I want to open it because we don't have a lot, a lot much time and I want to answer any question that you may have. If you want to ask a question, just raise your hand like this if you're on a, or, um, or use the raise hand button. And Claudia, I see, uh, yeah, why don't you unmute yourself uh can we unmute i did okay good so I have a question. hi when you say sound when you're breathing do you mean just the sound of breath or do you actually mean like a where you're using your throat like mm. yeah the sound this you you are using your throat so one of the sound that and there's three levels of sound to calm the mind and one of the most uh powerful sound to sleep is is the sound of sh like okay and and breathing and and doing it first vocally and then whisper and then slowly slowly without without even putting a lot of sound out so slowly calming the mind and and that's that's a very powerful sign for for liver energy and for heart you know the sound of and when you breathe it's very nice to do thank you for asking so you breathe into the lower abdomen Sure. And you're putting your mind in the lower abdomen. So uh, if you think about people that are stressed or very in the fight or flight response, they're breathing like shallowly into the heart and you put your energy here and breathing into the lower abdomen would take the energy off the heart. And actually it's a place of being center and relaxed. So even just focusing on the point between the navel and the spine while breathing in and then while breathing out, doing the sound, while steep, still keeping the mind in the lower abdomen would really, really calm the mind, yeah? It would bring the energy from the heart into the belly. Yeah, this is a very, very nice way to, 
to kind of center in your belly center, that's the area of, we say, of peace and power. Thank you, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Anybody else want to jump in and ask a question? Go ahead. Hi, uh, bad hair day, I'm not going on screen. Um, <laughs> can you hear? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, uh, monkey mind, and I've tried the breathing techniques. I've tried to focus on air in and out of my nose and the monkey just keeps going and going. Monkey mind, I know. This, this, is, this is a crazy monkey sometimes, right? <laughs> out of control. Out of control, right. And, uh, and, and yeah, and, and so that would be, that's very challenging at times to really, uh, to really focus on breath. Did you, to, did you, so did you try to focus on just natural breath or did you do a breathing technique or practice? Mm. I try and focus on the air going in and out the nostrils. I've tried focusing breath on the Dan Tien. Mm -hmm. and natural, the natural breathing? breathing? Dan Tien. Yes. Oh, no. Uh, the, sometimes I try and use from the Dan Tien up through the coccyx, up the back of the head and down the forehead. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the monkey swings on it. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's a, that's a big challenge to, uh, and, and this is really just to tell you, to, to point out that the, the, the Shen, the heart is very busy. There's a lot of agitation. And so you're still kind of hardwired, you you wired. So you're, you haven't released a lot of energy. I would, I would suggest to do is to really take this time, like two hours before to really kind of like acknowledge, okay, I'm, this is my ceremony of about going to sleep and focus on and journal, like do this journal. If you can, you can write it down or you can just do it in your mind. Writing it down is much better. Like what is challenging? What was emotionally challenging today? Uh, you can put three things and what did, what did you learn from them? And focus on what are you grateful for? And really tell yourself a, a good, uh, a, a bed night, a, a night story, a bed night story when you're in bed. Like think about a time that you're maybe on vacation and just bring up the memories of, of I don't know, maybe you're in the water in the Caribbean or wherever it was and or talking with somebody or with your mother or with your daughter and it was really really good and really tell yourself this because uh, nobody tells us you know our mother doesn't do it anymore <laughs> we need to do it ourselves and to to tell yourself that all of these practices the gratitude closing uh and and getting kind of like wisdom from like what do you what was challenging what 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 did you learn from it and tell yourself a, a, a bed night story would be helping. And when you do the breathing afterwards, it would be much easier. It would be much easier. And I would, I would do if, uh, the sound techniques. I would do the sound techniques. So it's, it's a little bit more active than passive. When you are doing just acknowledging the breath coming in and out, it's, it's uh, subtler enough that you, the brain can kick on. So do something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more pronounced, like shh, the, the sound technique and, and really emphasizing and slowly tapering it down. So you slowly tapering it down. Uh, there's a whole uh, workshop that I did on sleep. It's like a three hour, that would be really good. It's, it's available on my website if you want to look at that or, or look at pr actually a movement practice would be very good too. Like doing a movement practice, like what we started with the neck rolls and exhale with the sound, holding this points. Yeah, there's other things that we can do. There's a lot of, there's a big sequence on, on my online platform, like a Qigong for healthy sleep. It's a three hour workshop I've done and there's uh, things on the online platform that we're doing now for, uh, for the heart, for calming the heart. But I would say these, these few things that I just mentioned would be very powerful. Like um, 
really thinking about sleeping time as the, as the airplane is about to land and you have to prepare to it. Uh, tell yourself a, a good night's time story before you're going into the breathing technique. And slowly, slowly, you're gonna just incrementally be wire, <laughs> yeah, the brain from that and then you will fall asleep. You'll see it'll work. Thank you so much, Becky. I hope that was, uh, that was uh, informative and uh, helpful. Uh, I see Kyle, yes, Kyle, last question, Kyle. Yeah, I was wondering uh, if you had any suggestions about waking up too early. I mean, it, it, like every morning, it's just way too early. <laughs> And, uh, and what, what is the time that you wake up? What is the time? Uh, you know, maybe five in the morning, no matter what time I go to sleep. <laughs> no matter what time you go to sleep, you wake up at 5 a.m. So, uh, so uh, at, at five you wake up or earlier? Uh, yeah, around five. Around five. And uh, so do you, so one suggestion would be so if you count seven hours back, what would that be? It would be 10, right? Yeah. Okay. If you would go to sleep at 10, do you go to sleep at 10 or at nine or is this too, too early for you? Um, that's a little early, but. <laughs> yeah, that's the perfect time, by the way. Uh, perfect time is to go to sleep between nine to 10.30, no later than 10.30. I sleep, that's how I sleep. You know, uh, since I, I've read all this, you know, all this new information about sleep and how it's connected to aging, to diseases, it's just an unbelievable. You really want to take it um, and, and sleep. And if you wake up at five, that's, a, you know, my, my, uh, one of my masters, one of my uh, Qigong master, he said, you wake up at five, that's the best time to wake up. <laughs> it's the okay. best time to wake up. And then and then you, you go seven hours, seven to eight hours, and then you go to sleep early. And that's, you, you'll find that that's much better for your system. It's actually nice to wake up early. There's a lot of ions in the air and outside. So when we're gonna talk about, about the, also like, what do we do when we wake up? But the first thing you wanna do is, is to get out and get all the ions from the, and in the morning, in early morning, is the best time to breathe the fresh air. Um, so, uh, waking up too early is, uh, is, is, is also a, an issue, but I, I think 5 a.m. is, is, is pretty good <laughs> from, at least from a Chinese medicine perspective, this is, uh, you know, unless you want, you know, you don't want to sleep after 11 for sure or not. Um, so, so try that, uh, you know, have you slept ever like uh, only four hours? Like if you go to midnight, you wake up still at five? I'm um, just curious. Yeah, I mean, it, it's only been lately. I mean, the last uh, few months, really. Mm -hmm. I never had trouble sleeping before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of new, uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of people that are having issues with sleep lately. And, and it's summer and it's also what's going on around us. And it's connected to emotional agitation. It's really connected to emotional agitation. So how do we expose ourselves less to, to stress, stressful situation? How we look at stressful situation differently, working on your mindset? Uh, and how do we... And try these techniques that I mentioned in the beginning, you know, thinking about how do you, how do you go to sleep? What is the ceremony? What is the landing? Yeah, the airplane needs to land prepare for landing and try to do these technique and see how, how it works for you. And there's more information also on the, on the <laughs> workshop. Uh, you you okay? sleep. Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, I think uh, if there's uh, okay, so that, that's, that's kind of summarized just a little chat. I wanted to keep it to half hour. So keep it digestible for everybody. And uh, I hope you got a lot of information from it. That's going to be also available on my podcast, Awaken the Healer Within, and also on YouTube, my YouTube channel, Chi with Ellie. Uh, and, you know, Chi with Ellie, if you go on YouTube, you just do subscribe and you'll, you'll get all these videos on different topics. 
uh, thank you guys so much. It's so nice to have uh, a live event like that when we can talk about kind of like issues, more medical Qigong issues and how to resolve them. Please, if you tried one of these techniques and it works for you, please let me know, email me. It'd be, it'd be really nice to, it'd be really nice to get a feedback. All right, guys. See you next time, Thank next you. week, Thank another you. subject. Bye. Thanks, Ellie. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ellie. <laughs>